Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Lanner, Chief Editor of Dental Economics. Thank you for joining us for another edition of DE's Recall Visit, where we visit with some of our favorite authors and some of our favorite recent articles. I'm here with Diane Watterson. How are you doing, Diane? I'm well, thanks. Good to talk with you today. Oh, my pleasure. Well, so we uh, we have a, one of your fine editions of your column uh, in our April issue. You talk about how big is your practice pie. This is an excellent overhead article, and overhead and profitability is one of my favorite subjects. You had a reader write in saying, hey, I'm paying my staff around 30%. Uh, it's 30% of my overhead goes to my staff. What do you think about that? Well, I know that 30 seems a little bit high, but when you consider that this is not a one doctor practice and it's also the, the bigger the practice is, uh, the more people it takes to run it. And so uh, this doctor went on to talk about his staff and, and he felt like they were all good uh, workers and he spoke glowingly about them. And I, I think he's probably right. You To run things smoothly, you need to be properly staffed and you need good people. So when we consider taxes and we consider benefits and all those things together, he's probably not out of line. I, I encouraged him to look at the different categories of overhead, like for front desk people and for hygienists and chair sides, all that, and look at those individually as well. So a good target for, say, a, your average one doctor practice, 30% is, it's on the upper limits, perhaps, of of where he would want to be. You'd want to be more in, in the 20s, is that right? I would. I'd like to keep it 28% or less for a one doctor practice. Uh, I've seen it higher though. And, um, you know, when I've talked with doctors about that, I, I have to keep in mind a perspective that every practice is unique and certain practices do procedures that quite frankly, they need more people. And so we have to look at everything. And I know when it's getting to be too much and we need to look at what can we cut or how can we reduce this overhead. Yeah. And with staff being the, the largest part of our overhead, but also our most valuable, uh, we can't just pick up the phone. Uh, we can pick up the phone and maybe talk to our lab and say, let's negotiate better fees, but we can't just cut our, our assistant salary. That's not very motivating. Uh, so this is an emerging problem because we have you know young dentists buying practices with senior staff and they want to retain them, but they're being paid. You know They've been, been you know, bonused or, or they've gotten raises for so many years or just an existing practice where the, the team wants that, looks forward to that raise every year or two um, at a time when we aren't necessarily seeing increases in our compensation if we're accepting some PPO panels, right? Our reimbursements aren't going up like clockwork. Um, can you, uh, that is a, a massive topic I'm throwing at you, but can you, can you offer some, some insight as to how, how dentists can start to, to peel that apart? Well, there are not too many practices today that do not accept any, uh, participation with the insurance and, and I'm, uh, I'm okay with that as, as a consultant, one thing I look at is how much is being written off. If they can keep the write-off to 10% or less, then I figure that's going to be pretty healthy. I think I can live with that. They can live with that. When it starts edging up to 15%, then I get a little nervous. And when it goes, when the write-off goes beyond 15%, then I get real nervous. And I, I know, because I know dental practices traditionally have a high overhead, that when they're writing off too much, and, and quite frankly, uh, I'm finding a lot of dentists today do not even measure their write-off. They have multiple fee schedules, and uh, when I ask them, well, tell me, how much are you writing off on average? They don't even know. So my advice is every dentist should, should be charging their full fee. They should be tracking how much they're writing off, even though it might not feel good every month to look at that number. Numbers aren't there to make us feel good. They're to help us make good decisions about our practices. So they need to be tracking the write-off and watching that. The tracking overhead and staff overhead, in particular tracking our write-off percentages, these are just some of the incredible metrics that you share with our audience on a regular basis in dental economics. And I'm so excited you'll be joining us again at the Principles of Practice Management Conference in July. 
Uh, we're, we're so excited to have you. I can't wait to see your presentation again. I, I've seen it a couple of times and I always learn more and more. Uh, you know, one of the best parts, of course, of, of this of this this conference is that attendees can not only sit in your lecture and learn from you, but pull you aside afterwards yes. and, and get some really incredible advice. Yes, I'm looking forward to it as well. Fantastic. Well, we'll see you. We'll see you in Norfolk in July. And uh, Diane, thanks for taking your time today. Yes. Thank you.